Yeah, I, I saw that they live together, but like, all right, let's see. Here we go, Miss like Pinto, Mister like Rose, oh, and Miss Bray's not here yet, but um, that one's. <clears throat> I was about to say. Was he? Huh? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Oh, I said okay. We're just missing Miss Bray. This uh, one's in training. This one we're gonna do. Oh, I was gonna try to oh, use this officer. It's, you're you're it's, exactly it's, right. I just looked at the, the thing. The now it's, I just printed it yesterday, so it's got it. So. Have you talked? So to okay. McKinley Denson's off. So we got. Yeah, I just want to make sure he's coming. That's Prometheus Walls always, and doesn't always happen. Donar Robinson. One of y'all here for one of those? I'm sorry, Judge. Well, since clinic physician. Since Denson was indicted, we just got Walls and did it? Robinson. I'm, I've Great. got Robinson, Judge. So you want to go through the calendar? And yeah, real quick. We got, real quick. Yeah. Uh, are we ready on? Well, one and two is Prometheus Walls. Yes, Your Honor. Um, the state is ready to proceed with uh, position uh, one against uh, defendant Prometheus Walls. For position two, um, the officer um, is in training, and um, we would... We would request a reset. It does involve um, not only the same defendant, but the same victim in both cases. So um, we would request a reset to your calendar after we hear the first case, because the facts are related. Ms. Pinto? You're on the record, Judge? Or yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got him on there. Yeah, she's in here. She's taking it down. Ms. Watts, when is, when am I on again? Um, let me check your mark. You stay, right? Oh, okay, I'm on, two, but yeah, sometime. Let um, me, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, the defense would oppose a reset judge. Mr. Walls has been incarcerated 154 days on these cases. Um, you know, the purpose of a preliminary hearing is for the state to show probable cause to keep a defendant incarcerated. We're, we're kind of doing it in the reverse in this. Right. He's incarcerated, and then we'll find out if there's probable cause, which is obviously contrary to the Constitution. Um, we would ask for dismissal for want of prosecution. Is this the first time it would have been reset for the officer? Yes, Your Honor. Yeah, I, I guess so. I had thought it was reset before, but it doesn't look like it was. Yeah, well, we can check Odyssey. It doesn't show any other resets on the calendar. <clears throat> Mine's a little slow signing in. <clears throat> Are you folks going to be ready on Robinson for Mr. Uh, Rhodes case? Judge, I do anticipate being ready. Um, I spoke with the officer uh, shortly before nine this morning. So I think we're just oh. waiting on her to get here. Oh, okay. That's fine. All right. Let's see. I don't know if your Odyssey's pulled up any faster, but mine's just kind of like. What are you looking for? This one? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I'm looking at Odyssey now, and it does not show any uh, prior preliminary hearing dates for uh, the defendant in that um, in that case. Um, the defendant did have a bond hearing in front of you on the 17th of January. I thought his name sounded familiar. Um, so, uh, all right, we'll give the one continuance for the officer in training. Um, and Ms. Watts is looking to see <clears throat> the next time. I mean, I'm on. The, I know I'm on next Tuesday, but. We can schedule him for um, February 28th, Judge. You said the 20th? 28th. 28th. Does that work for you, Ms. Pinto? It does, Judge. Um, and since it is being reset, I would ask to be heard on a bond reduction. Okay. We can do that. I guess you could bring out uh, Mr. Walls. Walls. Uh-huh. Bring out Walls. Is Bostic not coming today? Anybody know? Ms. Watts, you know if Bostic's coming today? 
I don't know. Um, I can find out though. If I send you her number, do you want to call her? Yes. Okay. You can just go ahead and go on up. There you go. Yes, sir. Corporal Devon Mitchell. Hold on, uh, Madam Corporal, can you hear him? Yes, sir. You can't? Okay, we'll make sure. All right. All right, so we will go forward on 22 CP 212385, Prometheus Walls. 154 days without indictment, uh, burglary in the first degree, possession of a firearm during the commission of or attempt to commit certain felonies, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Um, and then there's position two, which Ms. Pinto wants to be heard on a bond reduction for, but we will reset that prelim till you said the 28th? What she said? That was my understanding. Okay. For, oh, shit. All right. Okay, I'm sorry. I was making sure. She's. I think she's trying to call Boston. So we'll be we'll hear bond on two two CP two one two three eight six, 154 days without indictment, burglary in the first degree, criminal damage to property second degree, and criminal damage to property second degree. Uh, so if the state wants to go ahead on position one. I'm sorry, officer. What was your Corporal Mitchell? Mitchell. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Um, Pennington. Yes. Uh, good morning, Corporal Mitchell. Um, where are you employed? South Fulton Police Department. And uh, how long have you been employed there? For a year, one year. And um, were, you, um, were you working in that capacity on um, September 15th, 2022? Yes, sir. Did, um, did you come in contact with the Prometheus Walls then? Yes, sir. Um, how did you come in contact with Mr. Walls? I arrived at the location um, and witnessed him walking out of the house with a microwave. Okay, and what was this location? It was 625 Stonebriar Way. And is that in uh, Fulton County? Yes, sir. Okay. Why, um, why did you um, respond to this location? Um, it came out as a alarm call, um, but the complainant stated that they could see a subject on the camera um, inside of the location. So myself and another officer responded. Um, and as we were, as we approached, we noticed the garage up. Um, I was flagged down by a neighbor that stated that he noticed um, Mr. Walls inside of the location or at the time, um, a black male inside of the location that didn't live there. Um, we walked around the house, uh, noticed the garage was up. And as we approached, we noticed him walk out with a microwave in his hand. Okay. Um, so after you saw him walk out with the microwave in the hand in his hand, what um what happened next? So after we saw the microwave in his hand, um we made contact with him, um, you know, detained him. He advised that he lived at location. Um, but prior prior incidents, um, we already knew who was the owner of the residence. Um, so we detained him, placed him in the patrol car, and when we ran his name. Um, through GCIC, it stated that he had a warrant um, out of South Fulton for burglary. Okay. And then uh, after you determined he had an active warrant, what happened next? Um, I had um, GCIC run his name um, for his criminal history, and then I took him down to Fulton County Jail. Okay. And then um, anything happened after that, after that? No, sir. Okay. So... Um, you stated that uh, you knew that it was not his residence. Um, whose residence was it? It was. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know off the top of my head. Is he reading something, Judge? He has a copy of the warrants. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, well, I'm going to object to him reading from the warrants. Yeah, you can refresh. You your can memory. refresh your memory. Just refresh refresh your you can recollect. You can read the warrants, uh -huh. but then after you read them, you know, then answer the question. Uh, right, from his your name is Mr. Johans Mitchell. Okay, thank you. And did you speak to Mr. Mitchell? Yes, sir. Um, what did Mr. Mitchell tell you? He advised that he did not know the subject that was inside of his location. Did he advise if the, the subject was authorized to be there? Yes, sir. He said he wasn't authorized to be there. Okay. Um, so this microwave that was being carried out, did you determine who owned that microwave? Uh, Mr. Mitchell, he owned um, everything that was in Mr. Wall's possession and um, in his vehicle. So there were other items that were found that were Mr. Mitchell's. Yes, sir. And these were these were in the vehicle that was owned by who? By Mr. Wall. Okay. What other items were found? Um, uh, you, you can refresh your memory with the warrants. It was a a trimmer, a flat screen TV, and a microwave. Okay, and um, and so these items were found in the vehicle. Did you ever get evaluation for these items? Um, can you repeat the question? Do, do you know how much these items were worth? I don't believe so. Okay, thank you. Um, Did you talk to, um, so Mr. Mitchell advised you, just, just to confirm, Mr. Mr. Mitchell advised you that these were his? Yes, sir. Okay. And these were found in uh, Mr. Wall's vehicle? Yes, sir. Now, um, did, you, uh, did you talk to Mr. Walls at all? Yes, sir. Uh, did, did Mr. Walls make any statements? Well, when we um, first made contact, he said that he lived at the location and he said, oh yeah, this is my brother and he owes me money. Um, but that was pretty much it. That was it, okay. Did you search Mr. Walls? Yes, sir. Did you find anything in, in, in of note in that search? I actually did. I found a, a high point um, weapon. Um, it was a 45 caliber, I believe, and brass knuckles. Um, it was some other items. Um, It was keys and piles. Keys and what? Keys and piles. Oh, pillars. I'm sorry. Okay. And um, so you said you found a high point weapon. What kind of weapon is, is this? Is it's a it's a black um, a 45 caliber. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. Is it a firearm? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, this um, firearm, you took out a, a warrant for uh, possession of firearm by convicted felon. What did you base that charge on? When I ran his criminal history, um, it said that he was already a felon. Um, so that's why I took the warrant out. Okay, thank you. Okay. And um, this, um, this location we responded to was this a residence? Yes, sir. Thank you. And uh, during um, the course of this interaction, were you post certified? Yes, sir. Do you see Prometheus Walls in court today? If you do, could you please identify him for the court? Yes, sir. He's sitting to my left. He has a black mask on, um, a black jumpsuit. Um, okay, let the court know for the record uh, uh, the the witnesses that identified the defendant in this case. No, okay. Could you please uh, I remove their mask? Yeah, could everyone remove their mask? And the, could the court request that everyone in the court remove their mask? Thank you. Could you uh, could you just repeat your identification? Yes, sir. Um, black male, um, black jumpsuit. Um, sit next to the judge. I mean, next to the attorney. Okay. Uh, let the court know for the record that the witness in this case has identified the defendant, um, Prometheus Walls. Noted. And 
and um, so did you yourself just just to make it clear did you yourself witness the um the defendant walking out with a microwave in his hand um it was me and another officer okay no further questions for this witness subject to redirect cross yes judge may i remain seated sure absolutely okay uh did you say it's um corporal mitchell yes ma'am all right so you responded um after presumably a 911 call yes ma'am who made that call? Um, it was a neighbor named um, Mr. Varick Johnson. Varick Johnson? Yes, ma'am. And did you speak with Mr. Johnson? Yes, ma'am. Um, does Mr. Johnson have any type of ring camera? or any other surveillance video outside his home? Honestly, I don't know. Do you know if any other neighbors have surveillance video? Um, I don't know. So you didn't speak to any other neighbors? No, ma'am. And um, what about Mr. Mitchell? Does he have any kind of video? Yes, ma'am. He had a it was surveillance inside of the location um, on his alarm. Um, as Mr. Walls were inside of the location, the surveillance took snapshots. So he has surveillance video inside his home? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, is that video in evidence? I don't know. Um, at that time, I had him, I gave him the detective's uh, email address. Which detective? Um, do we have a, um, a generic email address for the CID? Okay, and you said there were snapshots from the video. Are those snapshots in evidence? Like I said, um, I can't recall. Um, I gave him the CID email and um, it is un unknown to my knowledge. And you said that you arrived with another officer? Yes, ma'am. Which officer? Corporal Monroe. Monroe? Yes, ma'am. Do you know Corporal Monroe's first name? Um, not at the top of my knowledge. Okay, but he's also with South Fulton Police Department? Yes, ma'am, she is. Oh, she, I'm sorry. And were you wearing body cam? Yes, ma'am. And that is in evidence? Yes, ma'am, it was recording at the time. Okay, it's recording and it's been preserved in evidence. Um, if you're asking if I pulled it to put in evidence, I didn't, but it was recording at the time. Okay, so maybe I don't understand your procedure. You record the body cam and then what happens with it? I record the body cam, I tag it, I put the case number in, and that's, that's it. And then the system takes it from there? Yes, ma'am. And Corporal Monroe, to your knowledge, she had body cam? Yes, ma'am. All right, and this all allegedly happened around midnight, correct? Uh, I believe so. All right, do you remember the conditions that day? It was uh, clear. Um, I believe it was hot that day, if that's what you're asking. Um, presumably it was dark. Yes, ma'am. Um, at the time of our arrival, it was it was, I would say dusk in a way, or dawn. Um, and then you know it turned into night. It was dawn at midnight. It was it was dawn at the time that we arrived. Okay, what time did you arrive? 
I uh, can't. I can't say. Did you say it was dusk and then turned into dawn? Is that what you said? I, I was trying to, you know, huh? I, I mixed up my words at the time. It was it was light out when we arrived. So you arrived hours after this allegedly happened? No, ma'am. I arrived and I witnessed him come out of the location. It was light out when I arrived at the location. Okay, so your warrant's wrong. Your warrant states this happened at midnight. Yes, ma'am. It does say that. <clears throat> but you're contending now that it, that this happened around dawn. Yes, ma'am. All right, and this uh, address, you said that's a residence? Yes, ma'am. A house or an apartment? It's a house. And is Mr. Mitchell the only person who resides in that home? Um, it's him, his wife, and his kids. And when you spoke with either Mr. Mitchell or, sorry, I think you said when you spoke with Mr. Mitchell, he did not know who the suspect was. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And the neighbor, um, Mr. Johnson, he didn't know who it was either? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> And all of Mr. Mitchell's belongings were recovered and returned to him, correct? Yes, ma'am. Did anyone, well, did anyone like dust for prints on anything? Um, when the um, detectives got there, detectives and CSI believe. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. The detectives and CSI, they, they um, dust for prints. There was um, blood on the wall, and they went inside and, you know, did their You're kind of dropping your voice. So. I'm sorry. That's okay. They um, went inside, and they dust uh, the blood that was on the wall. Okay, and that blood that was on the wall, that's been sent to GBI? Um, I believe so. And just to, because I couldn't hear you very well, they did also, <clears throat> excuse me, dust for fingerprints? Yes, ma'am, I believe so. And those were sent to GBI? I believe so. Which detectives were on scene? Mm. I'm not able to recall. Okay. And was it just one suspect that was seen on seen on scene? Yes, ma'am. And you said the items were allegedly found in a car. Um, was that car impounded? Yes, ma'am. And um, do you have a license plate for that car? The license plate is Tom Adam Union 1253. All right, and 
just for me, is that T A U one two five three? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, if I could have one moment, Judge. Um, when you, you said you spoke with the suspect, correct? Yes, ma'am. Did he seem at all different than like how somebody would normally be acting? I can't recall at the time. All right. Nothing further at this time. Redirect. Uh, yes. Um, just to clarify a little bit on the timing here. Um, was it, it, was it light out when you arrived? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, was it light out when you left? No, sir. Um, okay. And how approximately how long were you were you at the um, the incident location? Just your best guess. I will probably say maybe four hours. Okay, thank you. Um, no further questions for this witness. All right, Ms. Pinto. Anything else? Just I'm very confused about the timing now because. First, you said it was around dawn. You got there when it was light. It was not light when you left. Now you're saying you were there for only four hours. He had There's said no he mixed up dawn and dusk. Okay, so you got there at <laughs> dusk? I got there when it was light out. And when I left, it was dark. And, you know, the time changes early, so that's why I got it mixed up. Okay, well, this was September, but okay. <clears throat> Nothing further, Judge. Uh, the state has no further questions. Uh, may this witness be excused. Yeah, but I want to. What time did you? What time? What time did you get there? Do you have? Do you do you know the actual time? I don't have my report in front of me, so I don't. Do what now? I don't have my my report. I can't recall what time I got there. Okay. Yes. Anything else for him, Pinto? Um, so I'm sorry, Judge, just a couple more. Were you the first officer on scene? I believe we arrived at the same time. Okay, you and uh, Corporal Monroe. Monroe, and it was just the two of you at first? Yes. All right, nothing further. All right, thank you, um, Corporal. Stay safe out there. Thank you. The state has no further witnesses. All right. Go ahead with argument. Your Honor, um, the, uh, before the state um, proceeds to the argument, the state would just like to uh, ask the court to take judicial notice of a prior Fulton County conviction, 01SC12631, against this defendant for uh, possession of firearm by convicted felon. Right. Um, Judge, I'm going to post. I don't know where that's coming from. I don't. It's I, a I Fulton County conviction. Okay, but. Where is it? Is it a certified conviction? Is it the GCIC? Where's the where is she supposed to be taking judicial notice of from Fulton County Superior Court? Okay, well, typically they have to present evidence of a conviction, they can't just state it and ask the court to take notice from an object. The court can take that. This is a Fulton County conviction. You can the court can take notice of anything within Fulton County, like the, these records are before the court, and it's 20. Let's give me the zero one SC one two six three one. Okay. The state does not oppose having pretrial read this off, but the, the court can take notice of its own records. Boston. Yes. Can you go ahead uh, and just, we're going to address bond two, so I know you're not feeling well. Can you go ahead and just uh, give me the criminal history pretrial? 
Judge, in regards to Mr. Prometheus, he actually has another open case in Fulton County. Um, 21 CP, uh, possession of firearm during the commission, firearm by a convicted felon, cocaine with intent to distribute, schedule one, controlled substance, marijuana. Um, I think he's talking about the firearm by a convicted felon, 01 SC12631. Um, most of his convictions are for drugs. I think I've seen a couple of them. That firearm by a convicted felon, there's a firearm by a convicted felon in 04, it appears, for 10 years. I guess that because it was it's his second one. And because then there was also a manufacturing distribution of sale in 04 on that case. That was for 10 years. And he Thanks. has other um, convictions for drugs. At least two others. Not thank you, Boston. I'm sorry. I said I actually said thank you, Boston. You're welcome. <laughs> I hope you're feeling better. We won't keep you long at all. All right, uh, go ahead, Mr. Pennington. The, the state submits on the evidence. All right, Ms. Pinto. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, I'll, I'll submit to the charges on the calendar, Judge. Okay, so there's a. Probable cause on the burglary, the possession of firearm during the commission of a felony, possession of firearm by a convicted felon. And uh, she already gave us the criminal history, so go ahead um, on the bond argument. Thank you, Judge. Um, as stated, Mr. Wallace has been incarcerated 154 days. Um, of course, the case has not been indicted. Um, he has lived in Georgia his entire life, except for um, just two years in which he was in Michigan. He is 49 years old. He has seven children and six grandchildren all in the area. Um, if released, he would reside at 4120 Pierce Road, College Park, 30349. That's where he lives with his wife, his mother-in-law, his daughter, and his stepchildren. Um, he unfortunately was not working at the time of his arrest because he's in the process of, um, he's, he has a worker's comp claim. So he got injured on the job and he hasn't been able to work and he's trying to get that compensation. Um, once he's able to, he does plan to return to his landscaping job, um, which is where he was working, um, Prior to, to that, um, it's at Russell Landscaping. Um, it's owned by a family friend and a cousin works there, so he's confident he can get that job back. He's already talked to them, and they, they have already confirmed that he is hired and, and they're ready for him as soon as he can get out. Um, he does have, so as is noted on the calendar, he does have two cases that are holding him in Jail, he has a total bond of 85,000, um, which is too high for him. He is indigent. They do have a lot of children and grandchildren that they support. Okay. Um, so judge, we are, he can pay max 50,000 total. So essentially we're asking for both bonds um, to be cut in half. Okay, and um, Ms. Hunter, we're also going. This is also going to address bond in two two CP two one two three eight six burglary in the first degree and the two criminal damages to property. And I think that one already has a. Let me look because I know I heard it the other um, last month. But we got the body and we got the time. So and that also has a forty five thousand dollar good bond on it. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Pennington. Uh, yes, Your Honor, um, including these two cases and the other open cases, this is three open cases in Fulton County. The defendant was just heard for bond one month ago on uh, January 17th. Uh, the state believes um, there's nothing that came out in this preliminary hearing which would suggest the bond should be lowered um, uh, based on the charges that are here um, and that it was just heard a month ago. The state would also note um, in addition to defendant's criminal history, that the other case, 22 CP 212386, it was, uh, it's identified in that case that one of the victims uh, it was Ryan Adams, uh, who was the next door neighbor uh, to, uh, to this incident location and, and the incident location in the other case. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Adams um, also is uh, a former 
um, employer of uh, Mr. Walls, and there is indication in the warrants um, that Mr. Walls uh, had it, you know, was trying to, um, was basically coming around to this location and the location in the other incident um, because, uh, because uh, in some sort of revenge fashion uh, against his former employer. So that there's heightened consider, consideration here in this case that, not, that the, uh, the, the defendant might uh, commit further crimes against Mr. Adams. He's been back to this location multiple times. Um, and so uh, for that reason, the state would request uh, that not only the conditions remain the same, but the bond remain the same as well. All right. So let's see, pull up. Since I heard this last, uh, Ms. Hunter, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. And I have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew, except for court, lawyer, medical, and that would include his. When I say court or medical, that also includes anything you're doing for your workers' comp case, because you may have to go down where they have the workers' comp hearings. Um, and employment, as long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, and a schedule, you have to supply that to the ankle monitoring company and to Ms. Pinto, and she can supply that to the state. Stay away from 625 Stonebriar Way. No further contact with Johans, Y-O-H-A-N-C-E, Mitchell, and Ryan Adams. Let's see, I think I have one more. Um, also, sir, stay out of the city of South Fulton. Do you, hopefully you know the city limits because you cannot go back to the city of South Fulton for anything at all. So if y'all have to do some landscaping, you can't go there. <clears throat> all right, so I'll do 15 on count one, eight on count two, and eight on count three. 15,000, 8,000, and 8,000. See, and then for the second case, 22CP21386, that already has a $45,000 bond. Let me pull this up, look at it. And that's of January the 17th. Like I said, we got his body here and we got the time, so we'll go ahead and rehear it. Uh, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. You're going to have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, except for court, lawyer, medical, <clears throat> and attorney visits. And like I said, that also includes anything you have from workers' comp because you may have to go to doctors from there. But you do have to let the ankle monitoring company know when you go to those. Okay, sir? Um, stay away from 625 Stonebriar Way. Stay out of the city of South Fulton. You can't go there for any reason. So I've got a... 18,000 on count one, eight on count two, and eight on count three. 18,000, 8,000, 8,000. That ankle monitor will be paid for by the county. Oh, no further contact. Same thing. Johans, Y O H A N C E, Mitchell, and Ryan R Y A N Adams. Best of luck to you, sir. Okay, and uh, Bostic and Miss Hunter, so position for McKinley Denson, that was indicted. So we just have one more for the morning counter, and then we'll go to the, obviously at one o'clock, we'll be back for the afternoon counter. So we need uh, Donar Robinson. Sorry, just come on, okay? I don't bite until like 11.30. Your Honor, that, that concludes my business. May I be excused? Absolutely. Thank you. Good to see you again. Enjoy your new position. Run from me because I'll be following you. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'll, I'll be right in front of you. You'll be like, dang it. Thank you. And Judge, may I be excused? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Pinto. Thank you. Since we don't have any more night court, have a good weekend. Uh, not for the rest. Nice not for you. For this week. But I'll see you next week. Yeah, see you then. Speaking of, do you know if the North Night Court is ever going to be phased out or is this just forever? Well, for right now, it's uh, a year. I can tell you that. So all, from now or you're from when it starts? No, all, all this year. And then I think, Ms. Lewis, I think, don't y'all see if they extend ORCA, if they extend it again the year, we'll do it another year. Okay, thank you. Yeah.
We're through um, uh, September next. Come on. The testimony about this case is true. Nothing was true. Yes, ma'am, I do. Go ahead, state your name and spell it for the record. Jocelyn Brown, Tony. J O C E L Y N B R O W N. Jocelyn Brown, Tony. J O C E L Y N B R O W N hyphen T O N E Y. Thank you, Investigator Brown, Tony. You can go. Oh, ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Thank I'm you. Sorry. Let me do this. This is 22 CP. Two one four zero one six Donar or Dinar. Sorry, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, sir. Lee Robinson, ninety four days without indictment. You got aggravated assault, possession of firearm during the commission of or attempt to commit certain felonies, and possession of firearm by a convicted felon. And hold on, Mr. Nelson, I'm, are you going to want to address Bond? Yes, Judge. Okay, so uh, Madam DA uh, Bostic, I have a little heart. She's not feeling well this morning. So can I go ahead and hear the criminal history? Either one of y'all objects so that she can lay down and then come back at one o'clock. That's fine. No objection. Does everybody vote on me being very nice to Bostic right now? <laughs> All right. Anything for Bostic. Anything for Bostic. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Pre-trial. I missed all of that. I was on the call with the doctor. What did you say? I'm sorry. Oh, well, I was trying to be nice, but it didn't. I said, nice, 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 nice. Go ahead and give me the history on the Donar Robinson. You missed it. I will never give you that niceness again. Boss. Okay, give me just a second to pull him up. Okay. <clears throat> I appreciate it. She said some. Doc she had a couple of doctors for me, so obviously she was on the phone, not feeling well. So we'll let her go take care of her business. Isn't that funny how she missed that? <laughs> I hope, hopefully, Madam Court Reporter didn't take it down, so you can't ask that it be read back. And he has no bond as of 1116. Uh, Mr. Robinson, apparently he had an open pretrial case. 22SC180195, possession of cocaine with intent, possession of firearm during obstruction, possession of firearm by a convicted felon. Marijuana with intent and theft by receiving stolen property. How was that pretrial? 12 prior arrest total. He has a 2017 aggravated assault, 2011 aggravated assault, and 09 possession of marijuana. You heard all that? All right, yeah, is that it? All right, Bostic, we'll see you back at uh, one. Lay down and get some rest and feel better. Okay. All right. All right, now go ahead, counsel. I'm sorry. It's okay. Thank you, Judge. All right, Investigator Brown Tony, how are you currently employed? City of Atlanta Police Department, Domestic Violence Unit. And how long have you been employed with the City of Atlanta? 29 years. Okay. How long have you specifically been with the, the Domestic Violence Unit? Since it started um, about uh, a year and a half, almost two years. Okay. Um, are you post certified? Yes, ma'am. I am. Were you employed with the city of Atlanta police department on October 26th of 2022? Yes, ma'am. I was. Were you dispatched to a call regarding a person shot at 1939 shepherd circle, uh, Southwest? Yes, ma'am. Is that in Fulton County? Yes, ma'am. Um, did you go to that location? Yes, ma'am. I did. Okay. Uh, when you got there, what did you observe? Um, the scene was very active when I arrived. Um, the inner perimeter was already um, roped off and several officers um, were already on the scene. So I was um, assigned to the outer perimeter and um, the one of the beat officers had um, conversation with um, the suspect at the time when I arrived. Okay. And were you advised as to where the uh, person who had been shot was located? Yes, ma'am. And what were you told? I was told that um, she was transported to Grady for her injuries. Okay. Did you uh, receive that individual's information as far as name, date of birth? Yes, en route to the call, I received it. Okay. Uh, did you have a chance to speak with the individual who had been uh, shot during that incident? Uh, not prior to my arrival. Okay. Um, at some point 
Yes. Okay. And what was that part? Who, who did you speak to? I spoke to Ms. Tadell Moore. Okay. The victim. And, um, how did, how did you speak with her? Over the telephone because, uh, she was at, she was leaving Grady when I spoke to her. Um, her mom had picked her up okay. from the hospital. Um, did you also review body cam for this case where Ms. Moore gave a statement regarding the incident? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, what did Ms. Moore advise regarding the incident that happened on October 26th? Ms. Moore stated that um, her and um, Mr. Robinson had a verbal altercation, which turned physical, and uh, she had a handgun, and he took the handgun from her, and she was shot in the left eye. Okay. Um, when Ms. Moore advised that they were in a verbal argument, did she give you any, uh, or did she give any statements regarding where this argument took place? She said it took place inside of the residence and um, it had to be in between uh, the hallway and a room and the laundry room. Okay. Um, did she advise you regarding uh, her ability to leave the laundry room? Um, I can't remember at this time if she said what her ability to leave the laundry room was. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, detective. Do you mind just pulling that microphone just a tad down? Uh, didn't wear my hearing aids, let's be real honest. So I'm kind of having a hard time in the speakers way back there. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. No, no, it's me. Would looking at a copy of the warrants in this case refresh your memory? If I can. Yeah, please. Okay. Please take a moment to look over it, read through it, um, and let me know when your memory has been refreshed. Yes, ma'am. It says the accused physically. Um, she was physically uh, prevented, um, the victim prevented her from leaving the laundry room. Did, um, it, did she advise how she got into the laundry room? No, ma'am. When I spoke to her, she was in a lot of pain. Uh, so I was briefly trying to ask her questions. And, um, and like I said, I had been on the scene for over six hours. Okay. Um, Actually, let's let's talk about that. So why can you tell uh, us why you were on scene for so long, um, particularly when the victim had already been transported to Grady? OK, um, so when I received this call, I was on another call and um, the call came up as a person shot. But in route there, um, uh, Officer Mesador, he's the B officer, uh, one of the officers that was assigned to um, was given the call and he was speaking to the, um, I guess, to the uh, suspect. He told him that he was still inside the residence. First, he told him that he was at a store uh, during their conversation. And then he later told him that he was inside of the residence. So it became a very active scene at that time. Several units were dispatched uh, to that location. Um, several specialized units like the um, crime suppression team and the SWAT team units were gearing up to all come out there and um, handle this situation because we thought it was a barricaded gunman situation. Um, thank you. And going back to Ms. Moore's statements too. So, um, she advised that she had gotten a firearm and that they wrestled for the firearm? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and I know you said at some point that uh, Mr. Robinson had shot her. Did she, do you know where she got shot? Yes, in the left eye. I saw that on the body camera. Um, Officer Bouquet, he wrote the report and I watched his body camera footage. And when it started, um, Mr. Dale Moore was outside she had crawled outside of the uh, residence and she had on a pair of black jeans and tennis shoes and her, um, the left thigh had a hole in it. And Officer Bouquet was at that time on the radio advising. He was trying to apply a tourniquet to her left leg. Okay. Um, when, what did Ms. Moore advise regarding her relationship with Donna Robinson? She said they were girlfriend and boyfriend and that they both lived at the location. Okay. Um, do you see Donna Robinson here in the courtroom today? Yes, ma'am. He's um, wearing a blue um, outfit sitting at the defense table. Okay. Judge made the record reflect uh, witness identified the defendant. Noted. Thank you. Uh, 
investigator, what were you advised? So I know you discussed um, that SWAT came on scene and that essentially it took six hours out there. Um, was entry eventually made into the home? Yes, it was. Okay. Um, were you on scene when that entry was made? I was on scene, but I was not uh, at the residence. Okay. Um, were you advised regarding any items that were recovered from that scene? Yes, um, a black Taurus semi-automatic um, pistol was recovered and um, Mr. Dale Moore's cell phone. Okay. Did you also have the opportunity to review the criminal history for this defendant? Yes, I did. Okay. And um, specifically today, uh, prior to you testifying, you reviewed the sentencing sheet for his conviction from March 11, 2011? Yes, ma'am. And um, on that sentencing sheet, that indicated the defendant has a conviction from that date for being a convicted felon in, pos in possession of a firearm out of Fulton County? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Judge, no further questions at this time. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Rhodes. Thank you. Um, it's Investigator Brown Tony. Yes, it is. All right. Um, Investigator Brown Tony, um, on uh, December, sorry, no, October 26th, uh, do you know who made the 911 call for this incident? I do not have that information at this time. All right. Um, do you know if it was written anywhere in your warrants? Um, do you mind if I look? Sure. Okay. Um, Mr. Dale Moore in the um, police report is listed as the caller victim. All right. Um, and she had complained about uh, being shot. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you know who or which officers would have been the first responders? Um, that was Officer Bouquet and um, Officer Robertson or Roberson. Could you spell Officer Bouquet's name for the record? Yes, it's B-O-U-Q-U-E-T-T-E. -E. First initial is M. And Officer Roberson? Yes, his first initial is J, and last name is R-O-B-E-R-S-O-N. Understood. Um, and you yourself were not um, initially an initial responder? No, they were the beat officers who responded first, and then they requested domestic violence because it was a domestic violence, stemmed from a domestic violence situation. All right, and you mentioned... Well, let me ask this. Did you personally see um, Mrs. Steele Moore's in injuries? Other than the body camera footage, no. Understood. Do you know whose body cam footage you did see? There's several um, body camera footage, but Officer Bouquet's body camera footage it starts out showing Miss Moore. All right. Do you know if there's any surveillance inside the residence? Um, I don't know at this time. All right. Uh, do you know if there was anyone else inside that residence? During the incident? During the incident. Just Mr. Um, Robinson and Ms. Moore. All right. And do you know if any neighbors were spoken with in this investigation? I can't remember at this time. All right. Um, Okay, well, you mentioned, uh, you know, that there was a verbal altercation at the beginning of this, right? Yes. Uh, did Ms. Moore mention to you what this altercation would have been about? No, she did not. All right. So a verbal altercation. Um, you mentioned as well that this was Ms. Moore's firearm. Yes, sir. Do you know where that firearm was kept inside the house? Uh, I, I can't remember at this time. All right. Okay. 
going back to the altercation, um, you mentioned Miss Moore uh, tried to obtain her own firearm uh, during the altercation. Yes, sir. All right, and she would have been the first to have reached it? Yes, sir. All right. Um, afterwards, there was a struggle over the possession of the firearm? Yes, sir. Do you know if Ms. Moore would have pointed the firearm at um, Mr. Robinson? Sorry, yes, Robinson. I don't know the information at this time. All right. All right, and you mentioned that you first spoke with Ms. Moore when she was discharged from Grady? Yes, sir. Do you know how long she spent in Grady? Uh, it could. It was probably about five to six hours. Okay, so you spoke with her essentially the same day of the incident? Well, the incident occurred around 628, where it started uh, somewhere around 5 or 628, and um, I was still on the scene um, with the SWAT team, probably up until almost one o'clock. And I spoke to her around that time. So she was, it was probably about six. She was there probably about six hours. Understood. Um, what's that firearm, by the way? Was it uh, recovered and placed into evidence? Yes, it was. Do you know if it was ever uh, dusted for fingerprints? Um, it went to the um, to our property evidence room, so I must, you know, they probably sent it off to somebody. I, I haven't looked at the report yet. One moment, Judge. more questions uh do you have you heard the initial 911 call not at this time All right uh so you wouldn't know if uh miss moore stated that it was specifically mr roberts robinson who spoke with her who i'm twisting it up if, you wouldn't know if miss moore um said in that 911 call that it was mr robinson that shot her I haven't listened to the 911 call. During her interview, your interview with her when she was discharged, uh, did she say that it was Mr. Robinson who shot her? Yes, and, and prior to that, um, we had two detectives from the Ag aggravated assault unit to go down to Grady and um, interview Ms. Um, Robinson. And um, that's how we got his name and date of birth. And we, um, once I was on the scene, I had my city issue laptop. I was able to... Um, run him on Omnix and obtain a photo of him and send that to the investigators over there for her to make a positive identification of Mr. Robinson. Understood. Those are all my questions. Thank you, investigator. Okay. Any follow-up? No, Judge. All right. Argument? I'll reserve, Judge. Briefly, Judge, yes. Um, I do believe um, that this is essentially a self-defense case. Um, per evidence presented in court today, Miss Moore was the first to reach the gun. There was an altercation, a verbal altercation beforehand. It would stand to reason that Miss Moore, um, of course, threatened Mr. Robinson with the gun first. Um, and Mr. Robinson instead, of course, was trying to defend himself in, you know, 
this altercation that now involved a gun that Ms. Moore brought into the situation. Um, we don't have, of course, a, a statement from Mr. Robinson or anything. And it may be, of course, that uh, Ms. Moore was trying to cover her tracks in terms of who was shot and why. Um, Judge, I would ask that there's no probable cause then just because there's no true uh, evidence that it was indeed Mr. Robinson who shot uh, Mr. Moore. Um, and instead it was just an altercation and you know, she held the gun first. Uh, I would ask that there's no probable cause for that aggravated assault, um, which would then, you know, I'd, I'd ask for no probable cause on the remainder charges that stem from that. What says the state? Judge, I am asking the court to find probable cause for um, the charges as listed. In addition, I am also asking the court to find probable cause for a false imprisonment charge. Um, that would stem from uh, the officer's testimony regarding Ms. Moore's statement that uh, they began this verbal argument. She was in the laundry room um, and actually the defendant prevented her from leaving that laundry room. It wasn't until that point where the firearm was even retrieved judge. And so um, the court currently has no evidence that the victim uh, pointed the firearm at the defendant or threatened him in any way with the firearm. The only evidence before the court is that the uh, victim pulled out, retrieved the firearm after being um, cornered into this laundry room. And then there was a tussle over the firearm and the victim was the one who uh, ended up being shot, Miss Moore. Um, defense counsel argued we have uh, no information regarding who was shot and why. Well, we do have an indication who was shot. Uh, Miss Moore was shot in the leg. There's no evidence that the defendant was threatened or harmed in any way with the firearm. Um, and so, Your Honor, based on the evidence presented, I am asking the court to uh, find probable cause for the charges listed and the additional charge of false imprisonment. May I reply to the false imprisonment? Sure. Um, judge, again, due to the nature of the alleged altercation that occurred, Ms. Moore was the first to have the gun. Ms. Moore was in the position of power here. Ms. Moore, of course, could have left. Um, it was instead my client who was left or um, threatened. And, you know, if anyone would have been imprisoned, uh, you know, it would be the person not holding the firearm, at least not holding the firearm initially. Um, so judge, I, I would just think out of a basis of common sense, there wouldn't be a basis for a, a false imprisonment charge. Um, just considering again, that Ms. Moore herself was the first, uh, possessor of that firearm okay. and, and could have left freely. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to find probable cause on ag assault, possession of a firearm during the commission of or attempt to commit certain felonies, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, and defaults in prison. Uh, we've already heard from pretrial, so go on in your bond argument. Yes, Judge, one moment. Okay. Oh, and I had told the detective she could leave. <laughs> I was trying to, <laughs> Thank you. I yeah. appreciate it. I was trying to like wave her, like, she go. So I'd forgotten to release her. Uh, ready, Judge. Uh, Mr. Donna Robinson is 34 years old. Uh, he's a lifelong Georgia resident, um, no flight risk. He's lived in Georgia his whole life. He has three children here as well, uh, age six, six, and five. Uh, he does speak with him every day. Um, his, his children do miss him. Um, he is a graduate from Booker T. Washington High School here in Atlanta as well and uh, went to trade school for general contracting at Atlanta Area Tech. Uh, he's been doing general contracting work for the past 15 years. Um, we do have an address for him that he would be staying at um, upon release. Uh, that would be 934 Garden Walk uh, Boulevard in Riverdale, Georgia. I think that's Clayton County, isn't it? I believe so, yes. Okay. Um, with that, Judge, uh, we would ask that bond be set for Mr. Robinson. He has been in jail for 94 days now without indictment and is statutorily required now for a reasonable bond to be set. Uh, I would ask that bond be set 
uh, no higher than 40,000 on all charges combined. All right, what says the state? Judge, um, there was a few things that I wanted to note regarding the defendant's criminal history here in Fulton County. Um, so in, in February 12th of 2009, he had a revo revoked first offender sentence for influencing a witness. That's in 07SC52391. Um, on that same date, uh, and presumably what revoked his first offender sentence in that first case was a possession of marijuana with intent to distribute. Then on March 11th of 2011, he has a possession of a firearm by a convicted felon uh, conviction that is in 10 SC 87982. Uh, on December 8th of 2017, he has an aggravated assault family violence conviction. That was in 17 SC 154246. And then from October 26th of 2020, uh, he has a conviction for possession of MDMA. Uh, there were a few other charges with that case, Judge, and that is 19 SC 168225. Judge, while I don't have um, any information regarding his uh, risk of flight, uh, given his criminal history, the state would certainly argue that he's at risk to reoffend. Um, Additionally, in particular with the influencing the witness, influencing witnesses conviction judge uh, and the fact that he knows this victim, knows where she lives, um, had a relationship with her, I would also argue that he is certainly a risk of intimidating or otherwise influencing this witness um, and would be a risk to the community based on his history, this offense um, combined. Judge, uh, given that what we've heard in the preliminary hearing today and the added charge of false imprisonment, Judge, I understand that he is entitled to bond. However, I would ask the court to set it at $150,000. All right. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from 1939 Shepherd Circle Southwest. No further contact. Absolutely none. No phone call, sir. No messages through third parties. To, with T E D E L E Moore, M O O R E. You're going to have ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew, except for court, lawyer, and medical. You're also going to stay out of Fulton County. Uh, Garden Walk Boulevard runs into, was it Old National? That's Fulton County. Don't go all the way down Garden Walk. Don't go to Fulton County for anything. No lunch, no gas, no anything. Stay out of Fulton County. <clears throat> It does concern me because there's been prior aggravated assault and family violence. So let's see, we got uh, aggravated assault, family violence, $75,000, $20,000 on the possession of firearm during the commission of a felony, and $25,000 on possession of firearm by a convicted felon. As of today, sir, do not reach out to her. Do not contact her. Don't have somebody else contact. That includes jail calls. Best of luck to you, sir. Judge, you yeah. added a false imprisonment charge. What's the bottom Oh, yeah, false that? imprisonment, $25,000. Thank you. I had that written down. 25,000 on false imprisonment. Best of luck to you, sir. All right, so it looks like uh, McKinley V. Denson has been indicted, so Ms. Bray doesn't have to be here. Uh, that's our nine o'clock calendar. And then on the one, are you going to handle the one o'clock too? No, Judge, I'm not here. For okay. Now. Clark, 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 Clark. Gowdy, Ms. Clark, and Ms. Gowdy. All right, so we'll be down until one o'clock. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. Is that his name? Oh,